Welcome to the Innovative Pedagogy Podcast. I am your host, Chris Garcia, and today we have an authentic episode sharing about the well-being of educators. I have the honor of interviewing one of my first administrators and also one of the educational leaders of the South Bay region of San Diego, Dr. Daniel Winters. So Dr. Winters serves as the Director of EdTech and Research and Evaluation for the Sweetwater District. He has been in, he has been in education for the last 33 years serving as an English teacher, assistant principal, principal, and now district administrator. Welcome to the program, Dr. Winters. Hey, Chris Garcia. It's uh, great to be here. Thanks for the invite. Looking forward to talking all things education and, and wellness, and especially in times like these, that's more important than ever. So glad to be here. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? I just want to say that, I mean, I can't believe it's going to be, uh, I'm going into year eight. So we've already been seven years away since I've started, uh, or I had the opportunity to start working with you when the, when we opened up Camarena, and uh, I still I can't believe, and I fathom like my first year teaching, opening up a brand new school, um, and one of the biggest schools in in the in the district here in Chula Vista, and uh, just to see where we're at now, and it's like I I would have to say that that thrill that first year, um, I mean, I still can't compare anything to it, even with all this distance learning going on right now. I mean, I would have to say that, um, yeah, those were still some of the brightest and most challenging, but then yet most uh, character building times. Yeah, you know, that, that, those were great times and the memories of doing that with that community, the teachers that we put together and the sort of the esprit de corps that was built up to start a new school like that, that school was. And uh, uh, the, those memories are definitely ones I'll cherish uh, being a part of that. Again, not just the staff, but the community. They were really well bought into and excited about that project. And I think, you know, we did good work. We can be proud of that. And uh, here we are all doing something a little bit different now, but learning from what we did that worked and, yeah. and didn't work. So uh, good memories. Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. So I mean, how many Robo Griffins are there in the, in the country? I think there's probably not too many. That is true. That is true. There's not many Robo Griffins out there and a very unique... Uh, a mascot. I mean, I mean, it would have to be my class that came up with <laughs> randomness and uniqueness. But hey, they they put up a good argument and a good fight in comparison to all the other classes and grade levels, where we were able to coerce and and really use that sixth grade standard of of of, of that whole um, argumentative writing to like uh, convince the rest of the school that we need to be half eagle and half lion and robotic at once. <laughs> You know what? The, the uh, argument was foolproof. The delivery was classic. Sebastian Lang, you'll never, never forget Sebastian leading the charge. And uh, it was the right one. Doggone it. Uh, so I'll stand by it today, even though I get mocked by my, my parents, my family. Still. <laughs> I don't Stay care. I'm stand by. Yes. I will absolutely stand by a Robo Griffin as well. Yeah. So. Go Robo or go home. That's all I got. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Always for life. So. Absolutely. Well, I'm really excited to talk to you about this today because um, I know that I've heard great stories and I've gotten to see the fruit of different things at the end of it um, when it comes to your health. Um, I've been in, in different Fitbit competitions with you as well. And uh, the whole wellness, we got our campus there at Camarena all started on the whole Fitbit competitions. And I even started seeing, I started going district wide just a little bit. And uh, those were some of the most remarkable times. but. Um, during those times, you always talked about health and the well-being, and 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 you're going to be the one of the first administrators, and possibly one of the few and only that I've actually heard talk about being able to um, cheat a little bit. And when it comes to cheating, that means taking care of yourself, taking care of yourself on the weekends, taking your care of yourself with your family. And I really wanted to focus on this episode because right now uh, we're in technically in September well, as this episode's being released, and. So I'm imagining teachers right now are a little stressed with distance learning, the overwhelming tasks of it. So I want to start off in the beginning, if if you wouldn't mind, if, would you please share your story of what your health, when your health took a turn, and what did you have to do to take initiative to take care of yourself? Yeah, Chris, thank, thanks for that question. Yeah, um, finding the right balance in in any work is is challenging. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my story, like. In high school, I played some basketball and track, so I was athletic. Uh, then, you know, you move into college and career and family, and you you have less chances 
if you're not thoughtful about it, to keep that activity going in your life, whatever that may be. And when I was the principal at Salt Creek Elementary, uh, I was doing a little bit of bike riding and uh, not very consistently. One of the teachers, a couple of teachers there, Gavin Kelly and Tim Chris, both encouraged me to, to start running. And I loved to run in high school, but I hadn't really been a runner much since. So started casually picking up running and, and doing that pretty consistently there. Uh, to the point where I ran a, a couple half marathons. Um, and while doing that, lo and behold, on one of my runs out in beautiful East Lake, uh, got some chest pain, uh, couldn't finish the run, dropped on a bench, called my best friend, uh, Tom Glover, to uh, pick me up and take me into the hospital. And I, wow. so it turns out I had some blockage and had a mild heart attack uh, and got a couple stents put in and uh, thankfully, good medicine uh, got through that episode quite unscathed, but definitely recommitted myself to um, regular exercise. I mean, I was running at that time, and in, indeed, the running I think that I was doing um, kept me brought it to my attention quicker than I would have. Um, so I'm kind of grateful and thank God that I was doing that, so that uh, I was in pretty good shape at that time, so that. Uh, maybe the impact would have been less. So, so since then, certainly I'm keeping the exercise in the forefront. And it, it gets challenging. You talk about where we're all at now. Teachers and educators are breaking their backs to get ready for all eventualities right now and planning for a distance and hybrid and, and the unknown. And so I think it's challenging me and I'm sure others to keep routines in our lives uh, that are healthy, whether that means regular exercise, eating right, um, that becomes harder when you're um, extremely busy and or stressed. And, and I would say that the stress was probably the biggest thing that I didn't notice at the time in, when I, in my work life at that time that was really impacting me. Um, I had several illnesses at that time besides the, uh, the heart attack. I had an onset of shingles. Uh, I injured my back. Uh, so I was pushing myself quite a bit at that time and and you you don't your body will tell you right so you need to do something different uh to uh control yourself and and be in right balance so we have to be listening reflective on uh what our body's telling us what our mind and psyche is telling us and and be willing and able to make changes before it's too late what was the turning point as far as like after that heart attack that you got that you had to start creating these, like, was there any shifts in your mind that you were like, you know what, I'm going to, I need to commit myself to doing this, or, you know what, I'm going to start right now and change these certain things, or when it came to your work-life balance, like, was there an altercation between that after the heart attack? Yeah, that's a good question. I, reflecting back on that, I, I don't know that there was a drastic change one way or the other. Obviously, when you have an episode like that, you definitely reflect on exactly how you're spending your time and, and, and what kind of commitment you're giving to your health versus your work and your family. And uh, one tends to uh, create balance that doesn't always last. So uh, what I think is critical are routines. What kind of routines do you have daily, weekly, regularly um, so that you're using your time? We all have a finite amount of time and we're using it uh, in a way that prioritizes uh, health uh, and balances productivity, which I think is important as well with uh, taking care of your body and your mind. And, I, and you talk about balance, I, I think there's several things that are important. One is a routine. So you've got to have regular routines of reflection um, and goal setting and all those areas we mentioned. Um, I think uh, humor is important. So, uh, you know, I've, Always been one to have a good bad joke at the ready. Um, so uh, sometimes it's funny. Like, thankfully, my family reminds me of how unfunny I really am. So I have good humility when it comes to that. But I, I think humor is important. Uh, sometimes we get a little self-important with the work we're doing because education is trying to change the world, and indeed it is. But uh, in the end, laughing at yourself and laughing at, at the work you're doing is is helpful. So looking for ways for that kind of outlet. Uh, you know, I believe uh, reading is important and that, you know, strengthening your mind by getting new ideas. Uh, educators tend to 
either read very little because they're so busy or read only within the educational sphere, which I think is is kind of an echo chamber you want to avoid. So I tend to read widely. And I think that helps uh, spur my mind to different ideas that, that often relate to education, right? And help me serve the teachers and administrators who are serving our students. So uh, when I think of health, I think of it broadly, right? Not just physical health, but uh, your mind, your spiritual, as you mentioned. So all those things have to be taken into their proper balance. So it's that time of reflection, those routines that allow you to think, okay, uh, am I out of balance somewhere? Uh, and especially now when we're tasked with just the impossible, uh, open in school with, with no certainty anywhere. Um, but, but we can do that if we're, if we're taking care of ourselves first. Absolutely. And, and I've, I've often found that, that um, especially during pandemics like this, or even life changes of, of finding that consistency uh, regarding uh, just life in general, whether that be a, a spiritual consistency with the community, um, whether that be even work, family, uh, even a place to live. Uh, I remember even when I got married. I, I mean, I started. I got married and started a new goal at a new site the same year. And uh, mm-hmm. thankfully, everything went well. But there was certain things on my life that, like, oh, I even moved to a new location. I, you know, my you know, wife and I moved into this new spot. But the one thing that was very consistent for me was my church attendance and being able to go somewhere consistently on Sundays. And um, I was just more in my mind, like I, I need to, I need to be consistent to something because in my mind, I mean, there were so many variables that were changing and so many things to adjust. And um, but I find that very, very important. And uh, I would definitely echo what you just said of finding the, uh, those healthy routines and those things that are more consistent than often not. Um, even then, I remember having some discussions with some family members a few weeks ago when I was in Colorado, and uh, they had asked me if I, if I like to fast, um, like, but do extensive fast, like 40 days, just to kind of recalibrate my system. And I'm like, you know what? I, that's a great idea. And I have done other things where it's been like a, like a, maybe a, just an all vegetable fast or a liquid fast. But um, I've found as I get older, even now, like, you know, being mid 30s, just finding those healthy routines that are consistent that keep my, my, my body calibrated consistently. Um, and I also noticed that when I am stressed, and you mentioned it, you hit the nail on the head, that um, uh, eating, eating and the choices that you do when you eat, um, I, it's, uh, it's very, very dangerous. But um, that leads me to the next question. And uh, what are some ways that you've found to stay healthy and mentally sane, um, especially during like the most challenging moments within the profession? So whether that be opening up a brand new school uh, with uh, a couple first year teachers that are just knocking on your door every day like myself, or even this uh, COVID pandemic from having to sh- shift through completely, you know, being in person and now going online. And now this new venture of, of, of Sweetwater opening up a, a complete um, also online 100% program. So I, I can imagine sometimes those situations are stressful. But what are some ways that you have found to stay healthy, mentally sane, and and, and, and specifically these times? Yes, that's been a challenge more than ever. Uh, I think one of the things that comes to mind is separation and, and boundaries. Um, all of us who have been moved toward remote working have found the challenge of that. There's benefits of it, absolutely. Uh, and initially, my wife works in the district as well, and we we're both at home working from our home office. I found that that was challenging i think because the refrigerator was so close so um i ended up going back to work pretty early just to be able to have a that separation between work and home so i could say i'm going to work hard do the long hours whatever i need but so that i can go home and not be 24 7 uh it seemed like uh, when you're working from home there's really no distinction between home life and work life which was problematic so i think that Clear boundaries and separation. You've got to set those up for yourself, wherever those may be. Um, you've got to unplug. You know, we um, during this stretch have had a hard time taking any time off because there's so much to do, and we were fortunate to get three days out of town as unplugged as possible, uh, and and that really helps. I think you mentioned your trip to the Rocky Mountains and, and getting into nature. Uh, we have to make place for that. Our my good friend Jacob Ruse, the principal, now moving to La Mesa who's an advocate for hiking and biking and yeah. 
And, you know, I think we need to do that for ourselves. We need to encourage that in our staff, encourage that for our students, um, especially now that we're, we're locked up most of the time. We can go outside and we need to prioritize that to get the benefit of nature and uh, open space and breathing, even if it is with a mask. So, um, yeah, I think uh, we've got to have boundaries. We've got to have some way to have breaks, whether those breaks are physical, like I just described, or mental breaks. I, I like to, when I'm working, uh, I have the ability to, I like to be able to take, get away from work and get on my phone and look at some sports clip for 15 minutes in the middle of the day. Um, because I got to get my mind off of work. Otherwise you're doing the same thing all the time. And your decisions get weaker. Uh, you make uh, rash decisions without thinking them through. So you've got to give your brain a chance to just relax a little bit and then go back into the focused work. So even then, like, uh, that, that's one of the things. And, um, I mean, right now, today, while I'm recording this, it's opening day for baseball. But when everyone gets to watch this, we'll already be on one thing. So we'll see where our predictions are at. Um, but uh, we should totally right predict. now, I think the Padres yeah. are going to be in it at this point. But after a month, that's a bold prediction. So it's kind of hard to be that far behind. Okay, I predict the Padres will be two games up on the Dodgers when this plays. That's my prediction. Okay, so on September 1st, the Padres will be two games above the Dodgers. What about the Giants? What do you think they'll be right now? The Giants will be in a lot of trouble. My beloved Giants, who own three world championship trophies, I might add. Uh, I know that feels good for the Padre fans. Um, but, you know... They're, they're rebuilding, and uh, they're going to have a good time, but I don't think they're going to win a lot. So. Yeah, no, totally. I, my, my empathy for that, I mean, rebuilding is a, uh, a very consistent word in San Diego, and it has been for the last, like, 15-plus years. But they're, they're really good at rebuilding. I mean, let's say they're, they've got it down to a nap. Yes. Absolutely. See, and it's, and it's things like this, and that's why I'm looking forward to, like, that's why I don't mind all the challenges that are going to be happening with remote learning, or even the things and the innovations and the breakthroughs that we're going to have. Um, because even little things like sports, and I know it's going to be kind of weird watching baseball with no fans in the stands, but even last night, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, just for three hours, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. It's good to see people that I, I enjoy watching, athletes playing a game that I love. And um, like, was, like, like, like you were saying, though, um, I was able to get a good night rest and wake up like, all right, let's tackle on the day. Let's see what today brings, knowing that we have those mental breaks. So that leads me to the last question. And um, right now, again, like I said, we're in the middle of September or the beginning of September, and we still have between now and June. So what advice would you give to teachers and educational leaders right now who are dealing with the high possibility of stress and anxiety right now? and at any given point in time, they listen throughout this throughout this academic 2021 20, school year. What advice would you give them to, to keep on keeping on, but also to stay sane and stay strong? Yeah, so the, a couple of things this coronavirus, the gift the coronavirus has given us is to uh, wipe away the illusion that we were in control. Um, some of us think we're in control, but th there's so much uncertainty now, which in reality, that's always been the case. It is absolutely more widespread. So I think as teachers and administrators and educators make decisions about what they're gonna do, they need to under, embrace that uncertainty. Now we're, we're gonna make the best decision we know, whether we're at an administrator level, a teacher level, that, that given the circumstances today. As we all know, those circumstances are changing frequently. And so it's okay if our decision was not perfect. We need to make decisions and then be able to pivot and flex depending on how those circumstances change. Uh, so, you know, you just have to kind of roll with the, go with the flow, uh, roll with the punches and do your very best and do some clear thinking about what decisions you're going to make about your classes and how you're going to approach it. But be ready to, to pivot if things don't go the way you plan because they probably won't. Um, and, and they probably never did. I'm, I'm reading this book. I think uh, I forgot the name of it. It's Maria Konnikova. Poker player. Actually, she was a, she's an, um, a journalist who decided to study poker for a year and learn how to play poker with the intent of applying that learning to decision making. And and she said poker is the perfect place to learn 
imperfect information is what you have when you have to make decisions and that's life right so we have all this imperfect information uh we're going to make our best decision we can given the information and then the best poker players and the best people in life are able to then adapt to the situation and not say here's the decision i made i'm going to stick with it no matter what so all of us have to realize that uh, our plans are the best they can but are we able to just reflect as they implement as we implement and then make those changes that are necessary given the circumstances. Absolutely. And you bring up a very good point. Flexibility. That is that is key right there. And um, being able to take the punches. And um, I mean, one of the things I think we've talked about this, we got to talk about this a little bit in June. And I've shared this with several of, uh, of my current administrators and even colleagues. But uh, it's one of those situations right now, at least for this school year, we're in it one day at a time. And yeah. that's how we have to apply it one day at a time, one moment at a time, and being flexible because what we're dealing with today might not be what we're dealing with tomorrow. And as we learn from March 12th to March 13th, our educational system just shifted in 24 hours. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that just with that example right there, I think we need to continue to hold on to that. And, yeah. and if we can be flexible and okay and I mean, at this point, going over the grieving process of that situation um, yeah. and learning from it, if it were to happen again, to know that it's going to be okay and that we're going to make it through. And uh, but, but yeah, I really, I really appreciate your wisdom and um, really thank you so much for being with us today and hanging out yeah. a little bit. I know you're a really busy man right now. So. Absolutely. I, you know, I'd add one thing, Chris, too, that I talked about a lot, and I haven't always been good at this, which is less is more. Um, you mentioned the new school we're creating, we're doing an online academy in Sweetwater, and the design team has been really excited about many ideas. But the challenge that we've had to face is we can't do 30 things well, especially at the outset. What are the one or two things we're going to do and just do with uh, fidelity and do them well? Um, and I think teachers, same thing. You know, you're trying out new tech tools, probably some of them first time ever. Just learn one tool well and deliver it cleanly and get good at it and then build from there. Uh, I think there's obviously a real danger in trying to do too much at once. And so as you go into this new year, I think being clear about the couple things you want to get right uh, and then building off those would be a great, great approach. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would definitely echo that and applaud that and support that 100% because um, uh, even right now, I'm thinking like that was the one thing you told us back in 2012 uh, and 2013, actually, um, yeah. when um, we had gone back. And uh, I remember that one thing. I remember even bringing that subject up. If there's one thing that I would have to choose, and it's funny, I would still choose that today. And yeah. uh, that was class dojo. But the reason why was because of parent communication. And yeah. uh, with distance learning going on right now, I, I, I echo that with other teachers as well. Like, What's the number one thing? I said, hey, you know what? Get your parents on your side right now. Communicate with them. Get them on yeah. your side. I'm not trying to advocate all these other tools that are out there like Flipgrid and whatnot. That's, I mean, these are great tools. But um, I think the biggest thing that right now that we need is communication. Um, and, uh, and that's the biggest tool because, one, we need it as human beings. We need to communicate. And uh, we miss that, especially in person. And, and we're dealing with the livelihood and the educational establishment of a lot of students and communicating with parents and finding any which way to get them on your on your team and joining in their team is going to be huge um, yeah. even as you were talking earlier about the camarena community um the beauty about that was that it was the entire community that all came together at once even at yeah. the fall festivals that we would have and the, the uh, morning meetings on mondays it, it was a community event and uh yeah. And I think that's right now what society needs is for some way, somehow for us to come back together strong as a community. And um, But um, I would definitely echo that one thing that teachers can build on is very, very powerful. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Dr. Winters, for um, just being with us today and sharing. And uh, best of luck for everything this year, um, especially with the online school. Uh, you're, you're, you're trekking territories that are unchartered especially for public schools in the south bay so really applaud you and honor you for that so uh, good luck with that thanks Chris. it's always great talking to you and uh, good luck to you in the beginning of the new school year thank you thank you so much and i want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in today we hope you enjoyed today's episode and focus if you'd like to follow dr dan winters on twitter please follow him on the following handle 
at DF Winters. I'm there. I'm sure you'll find updates of what he's doing and what he's working with and how he and his district are conquering the distance learning challenges that many districts um, nationwide are facing. Uh, please also feel free to send an email to cbgarcia at sandiego.edu with any questions or topics of discussion. Please be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Innovative Pedic. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you guys subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel, Mr. Uh, Mr. Garcia's Education page. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in October for our next episode. But thank you guys. Um, keep on, keep on, stay strong, and um, we will all get through this. All right, take care.